Okay, for this video, I'm going to recreate uh, the five best shots of my career, which I uh, put in my autobiography, um, which came out three or four years ago. I think it's still available. Um, but yeah, the top five shots in my career, so let's recreate them. John Virgo actually said in commentary this was the bravest shot he'd ever seen. The final of the World Championship, 1992 against Jimmy White. I'm 14-8 behind. I've got it back to 14-9. And so in this, this is the last frame of the afternoon session. So you're either 15-9 behind, which you probably lose the match because Jimmy needs three more frames to win the World Championship, or you're 14-10, you're right back in it. So I've, I've, I've made something like a 40 or 50 break. The last red was here and I've, I've screwed back. I, I, I played to come about here in the blue. You can see where the yellow is just in bulk. So I, I played to come here with the blue so I could play an easy blue off the cushion for the yellow. So obviously too short, um, so straight on the blue. So I can't, I can't plot the blue and, and, and get anywhere near the yellow. So any normal thinking snooker player, the, this point of the World Championship final, I mean, you roll up to the black. You leave the cue ball here. I mean, you got Jimmy Bang in trouble. You snookered on buying blue and pink. I mean, it's a terrible shot. I didn't even think about that shot. Didn't even consider it. The only shot for me was this brown to drop it in dead weight position for the yellow. Now, if I miss this brown, the position's automatic. Jimmy's on the yellow and I'm 15 nine behind going into the last session. So it was a crazy shot to take on. My thinking was all out attack. I didn't even, even look at the black any stage. So going to try and recreate it. It's such a tough shot because you're, as I say, you're, you're hampered. You've got the middle pocket here. Let's try and recreate it. Um, as I say, one of the, under pressure, one of the best shots, I think, of my career. Certainly the top five, as we're going to show. But uh, yeah, this, 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 this was definitely up there. Right, we've potted the brown. As I say, if I miss that brown, this is Jimmy. He pots the yellow, he clears up, and I'm 59 behind. Probably lose that world championship. Uh, subsequently, I win the frame, 14-10 going into the final session, and win every frame, 10 frames in a row, to win the final 18-14. 1990, the Guildhall in Preston, uh, the final of the UK Championship against Steve Davis. Back in the day where the UK Championship had two-day finals, um, I was 15-14 behind to Steve in the final and made uh, probably one of the best breaks in my career actually to get back into this frame. Steve had so many chances to win the match 16-14, kept twitching, which is nice to see. Um, but yeah, so I made this lovely break and got to this situation where, again, another sort of shot where if you're in Steve Davis's seat and you see me, you're begging me to take this blue on you really want me to play this blue because if, if you miss it, you, 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 you know, you're bound to leave it on and, and, and you, you, you win the match. And Steve Davis's view, as I say, we're at the situation where I've, I've made a break. I'm trying to get to 15 all in this final and I've got this blue where I have to use the rest. I can't reach it because I'm obviously queuing over the black. So it's a matter of potting the blue down the cushion. OK, players will say the pockets were huge in those days. They weren't huge. They were probably bigger, I'd say they were bigger than they are now, but they weren't huge. And in any case, 15, 14 down in a final to try and make the decider, the pressure tightens the pocket. So you've got this shot where, as I say, it's an easy safety shot. I mean, you play off this side of the blue, you take the blue twice across the table, put it in a bulk cushion, bring the cue ball down here, maybe get a snooker. But, you know, I'm not thinking that's boring. Um, you know, I want to win the frame at this visit. So it's a matter of potting the blue with the rest and stunning the cue ball. I think when I potted it, the, the cue ball ended up around here and subsequently I went out to pot the pink. But um, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just such a tough shot. Whether sort of 30 years later in my career, I would still have gone for it, I don't know. But um, in those days, I said fearless. There you go. I showed you how difficult a shot is. I've missed it. I actually got away with that one. Just decelled a little bit in the cue. I didn't deliver the cue quick enough, really. So let's try again. That was a better delivery. What a tough shot to take on 15, 14 down in a final where, you know, you could lose the final in this shot. It just shows you, right, come on, let's get it. There you go, third time lucky. So potted the blue, Steve Davis gutted in his seat. Can't believe I've gone for it and I've got it. Pot the pink. 
uh, decider. And I think I made a 94 or 95 break to win 16-15. It was the first time I'd beaten Steve Davis in a two-day final. Um, tremendous victory for me. So in 1997, uh, the final of the Liverpool Victoria Charity Challenge against Ronnie Sullivan, I was 8-2 up in this final. Ronnie came back to 8 each. Fun enough, I actually felt okay. Um, due to the fact that Ronnie played so well, it's not as if I had loads of chances to win the match. Because um, when that happens and you miss, it becomes debilitating and you, you put yourself under pressure. But no, I came back to 8 each and I actually felt all right. Um, we get to the decider and, uh, well, we played two or three safety shots each and I'm left with this cue ball near the bulk cushion. You can see the, the situation of the reds. It's a, it's a situation where if I miss this red that I go for, I probably lose 9-8. He wins, you know, seven frames in a row. It's not the most difficult red in the world, but it's just dangerous. You've lost six frames in a row. How do you feel about taking this red on? Um, again, there is a safety shot on if I want it, but I want to play the attacking shot. So this red is a, I'm not hitting it too hard. I'm going full blooded. Um, there's no safety in my mind at all. Uh, you could play this shot dead weight. And if you miss it, try and leave the cue ball on, on the black cushion, um, which would be an option. But I, I want to fully commit and I want to go play for the black uh, in potting this red. So it's just a matter of just falling through of two cushions. Keeping the head still is the most important thing. Well, there you go. If I've played that in the decider and missed it like that, I've probably lost 9-8, so let's give it another go. That's the way you do it. I went on to make, probably, I've made 11 maximums in my career in competition. This one is obviously the most special. Um, it's up there. This one and the one I made in the one table situation at the Crucible. But this one, to make it in a deciding frame of a final um, against someone like Ronnie O'Sullivan um, was obviously incredible. So the final of the Masters in 1991 uh, against Mike Hallett, that's where this shot uh, comes from. To sort of set the story, I was 7-0 behind in this final, 8-2 behind. Um, Mike had a chance to win 9-2, twitch the pink with the rest. Funny story actually, well not for Mike, but for me on the way back to the dressing room, he was walking in front of me and the whole way back he's banging his cues, banging his cues. So I could sense the frustration and I thought, if I could just win one frame at a time, drag this final out as long as possible, um, the pressure would build on him. Anyway, we get to the decider. It was a pretty scrappy affair, it wasn't the best standard I have to say. But I'm left with this shot, we got down to the colours, we're playing safety and again, another shot where um, you know, similar theme in these shots, you could play safe quite easily. I could just play this brown fool in the face, send the brown round the table, leave the cue ball there. Pretty easy safety shot, but this is a chance to win the Masters. Uh, this will be my for three in a row as well. Um, so I've got to play the attacking shot. The shot is, the brown's tight in the cushion. So the shot is to play with a little bit of run inside, which is right hand side. So when you pot the brown, the cue ball comes off this cushion, this cushion, this cushion, and it ends up down here to try and pot the blue in this middle pocket. So it's a tough shot. Um, made a little bit easier, the fact that the brown's tight on the cushion. If the brown was slightly off the cushion, it'd be more difficult. But you still gotta judge the pace. Again, under pressure, the decider of a tour like the Masters. How about that, first time. Three cushions. That's not quite, I've hit that too hard a little bit, that's not quite where I ended up in that, in, the, in that match. I think I ended up something like here. So I potted the blue, stunned off the cushion, and I, potted, I gave one of my worst celebrations ever, I think, uh, this one, because I potted the blue and I did something like, something like that, it was pretty embarrassing. But when you're eight two behind, you're allowed to be embarrassing. Um, three in a row at the Masters. So we've recreated uh, a red where I made a, probably my favourite maximum against Rona Sullivan and Decider. This one is from 1995, semi-final against Jimmy White. When I was clearing the colours, I was starting to get a little bit out of position. It wasn't, it wasn't quite easy because the, the blue and pink were next to each other. Anyway, I've potted the pink and I've had to take the cue ball up and down the table. I remember the commentator saying, oh, you know, stop, stop when the cue ball was running down. And the cue ball ended up here. And by the way, for £167,000, because it was 147000 from the sponsors for maximum plus 20 grand for the high break. So 
If you took time, a couple of minutes to stop and think about that, you'd never pot this black. When, when you're in a maximum, it's important to stay in that rhythm and, and, and stay, you, so, so you, you keep in your focus. My heart sank when the cue ball obviously went close to this cushion. Obviously you want it to be here. So you had nice, easy black for a 147. It's gone here, but the one positive, the one bonus factor of this position is I knew it wasn't a natural in off. I knew that if I potted the black, the cue ball wasn't going to go in the middle. That meant I could concentrate 100% on the pot, just play the, the cue ball normally. I didn't have to play any stun or anything like that. So it's a shot that, I don't know, it's probably 48 out of 50 for a pro, but for a 147 and one table at the Crucible, for 167,000 pounds, it becomes much more difficult. So it's, I didn't do it at the time, but I, what I would do now, I mean, you come round and you look at the, the potting point, um, as I say, you know where the black spot is. You know there's no in off. So it's just a matter of holding your nerve, really. Yep, I held my nerve there. And because I missed it, it went in off. That was a good thing about knowing if I potted it, I wouldn't have gone in off. Imagine that. I missed it and I had like £167,000. i gone. I mean, you'd be absolutely devastated. Right, okay, let's pot it this time. Black's in, cue ball's not in the middle of pocket. Uh, I've made probably one of my most memorable 147s and trousered 167,000 pound. It was a good moment, actually, good story about that. I actually went on to lose the last three frames of that session in the semi-final against Jimmy White. People were asking me to do photographs regarding the 147 and I was fuming, absolutely fuming. I left, I, I didn't want to do any photographs. I went back to the hotel because I knew I'd lost ground in the semi-final. And even though I'd made a 147, um, got that amazing bonus, financial bonus, I was absolutely fuming that I'd let the session go. Um, did go on to win the match, but it um, just shows you how focused I was really on, on winning the semi-final rather than getting the 147, but still um, one of the top five shots in my career.